Inside the last 25 minutes of the Sports Max Zone for this Thursday, still to come at the track on the show. We're continuing to talk some football now, though. Um, uh, the first time in the club's history we saw um, Newcastle managing to win at Old Trafford, eliminating holders Manchester United from the Carabao Cup in a repeat of last season's final. The defeat was Man U's second consecutive 3 0 result, having surrendered a Sunday 3 uh, 0 loss to. Uh, city in the derby. Now, all fingers have been pointed at manager Eric Ten Hag with fans and pundits questioning the Dutchman's tenacity in the role. Now, speaking at a post-match presser after the loss to Newcastle, Ten Hag says he's not worried about being sacked. I'm a fighter and um, I know it's not always going uh, going up and uh, you know, we have a lot of setback, setbacks this season so far. But also there you have to do with it and there is never an excuse and I have said it before and I know when, um, when there are setbacks then the routines in the way of play are not, uh, are not similar, not the same but even then you have to get the results in and yeah, um, obviously Sunday tonight wasn't far from that. Consistent narrative from former Man United captain Gary Neville who does not believe Ten Hag will be fired. I don't think they're going to sack him at all. Uh, partly because he shouldn't be sacked, partly because they would believe in him, partly because he's done a very good job so far, apart from the first few games this season. Last season, he did a great job. You know, he brought success back to the club with the trophy. He won, uh, he got to the Champions League, got into Champions League places and got to the FA Cup yeah. final as well. So I think that was a really successful season. And that we're only 10 games into this season. Uh, so for me, absolutely won't be, it won't be on the table for discussion, I don't think, by any serious... Any stable United fans won't be thinking about sacking Eric Ten Hag. OK, so to weigh in on this conversation, we have our former Trinidad and Tobago international footballer and regular um, performer on the show, Brent Sancho, uh, World Cup player in 2006 with Trinidad and Tobago, um, has long uh, spoken about Man United's woes, that uh, their problems in Man U stretch beyond the field of play and in the dressing room. And um, I'm getting the feeling that we may continue on that narrative, Brent. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's a good narrative. We should continue to... Definitely so. No, look, at, at the end of the day, uh, we've spoken a lot about Manchester United and their troubles. Of course, it's a lot bigger than Eric Ten Hag. I've said that many times on this programme. Uh, and it doesn't matter who you bring in at this moment, the problem will still persist. In fact, I think... Uh, I, do, I do think it will get worse, uh, Lance, because of the, the situation... Uh, the fact that they're still modeling or muggling around with the ownership and the seal of the football club. They, they're talking about bringing in Ratcliffe for the 25% ownership uh, and running the sporting department. I don't know who comes up with these sorts of deals and ideas. But it's a narrative since the Glazers have come in and, and uh, it's uh, continuous in terms of uh, the way that they've run the football club. Yeah, but the issues surrounding the coaching uh, positions, though, and the difficulties, because ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left the job, um, we've had, you know, sort of a, 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 a just a turnout of or a turnaround of, of, of coaching duties, and it seems to be a very, very difficult, difficult job. And um, they're in a rut at the moment for sure. But the narrative has been with a lot of Man United fans that Ten Hag's tenure hasn't been that bad overall. If you take when he was appointed to now. Yeah, you have to put things in context. I think when you look at a football club that lacks structure, that lacks direction, he's come in and done a job as it pertains to what he has to work with. Uh, but but that being said, I think the question marks now, and, and you know, Lance, I'm, I, I'm a big uh, proponent of not just firing coaches wildly, but uh, you do have to start putting question marks around Tarek Enhag and his squad selection, his, his tactical approach, his lack of identity. Uh, uh, with, with the team of, of, of current. Uh, yes, you could point to one or two injuries, but when you look at the team that left the pitch against Newcastle, six of the players are his signings. Uh, they look lost. Uh, they look like uh, players that uh, can't get into any team in the top five or six in the Premiership. Uh, and you start to wonder if he's lost the locker room. Uh, the, the battle with Jadon Sancho, of course, widely publicised, whether or not he handled that the right or wrong way. 
uh, and if whether or not uh, things are starting to go uh, downward because of all these different things. And, and you know, you look at, you, you think of the fact, Lance, that this is a team, Manchester United, just got battered against their, their closest rival on Sunday. They have a chance to, of course, atone that against an understrength Newcastle team who basically handed them the game before the match and talked about injuries and all the competitions that they have to play in. And then you get that kind of performance against players who really should be trying to prove to the manager that they should be wearing that red jersey. When there's so many question marks around the club as to which player should be there and not there, then you get a performance like that. I start to question on whether or not uh, the, the players are all in song with the manager. Yeah, well, we did have a press release coming out from the Man United, uh, the club today, that um, emphatically said that there is no discussion about sacking the coach. Not that that holds a lot of weight because history tells us <laughs> that when, when clubs make those statements, it, it's, not, it's not always you know, what, what happens in, in the end. But we're just 10 games into the season, Brent, and um, there is a lot of football left to be played between now and, yeah. and May. And, and there is a chance for uh, Ten Hag to sort out some of the issues and uh, get Man United running again. It'll be tough, Lance. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, I just think that it, it's such a toxic football club right now. It's starting to impact the manager as well. Here was a guy that came in, you know, had his tail up, was ready to make things happen. He took on the, the Cristiano Ronaldo situation uh, head on. And, and you felt that the club was going in the right direction. And then, of course, then there's this season and, and things that are starting to unfold. And you're looking, again, at some of his decision-making, that, that uh, chase after Mason Mount over the summer to, to sign a player that I, they really didn't need to sign and the kind of money that they paid for him. Uh, and you look at all those sorts of decisions culminating with this. Yes, as I said, they wanted two injuries, but they've been really, really poor. And, and at the end of the day, yes, I tend to sit on the side of not firing him and giving him more time to turn things around. But I even question that myself, whether or not he could turn it around. I'm, I'm not sure he can because of what has happened at the football club, because of the things that are transpiring. You just wonder where things go next for Manchester United. They, they do have a reasonable schedule coming up uh, and maybe he could turn things around. But if it doesn't happen for him, then, then what? What happens mm. then? Yeah. OK, Brent, we'll be watching that um, as the months go by. November and December, I think, would be critical for Man United and their performances on the pitch. And we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Certainly, guys, have a great one. Yeah, back with more on the zone after this at the track, after the break.